Did you know the inventor of Vicks VapoRub is also the inventor of junk mail? In this episode of Antique Bottle Stories. Lunsford Richardson was born in 1854 on a farm near Selma, North Carolina. He attended Davidson College where he graduated with highest honors in Latin in 1875. He taught at the Little River Academy before he became a pharmacist. In 1880, he moved to Selma to work with his brother-in-law, Dr. Joshua Vick. It was not uncommon in those days for doctors to dispense drugs themselves, but Dr. Vick was so busy seeing patients that he teamed up with Richardson, allowing him to handle the pharmacy duties for him. And that's when he began to experiment with recipes for the product that would become Vicks Vapor Rub. There's a museum in Greensboro, North Carolina with an exhibit devoted to Richardson and the Vicks products. A historian there says he was a man of great intellect and talent. Druggists at the time fashioned their own remedies and he created a number of remedies that he sold under the name Vicks Family Remedies. He was obviously a man of such creativity. Richardson's great-grandson explained he had what they referred to as a croupy baby, a baby with a lot of coughing and congestion. So as a pharmacist, he began to experiment with menthols from Japan and some other ingredients, and he came up with this salve that really worked. And that's how it all started. Richardson patented some 21 medicines. Some of the pills, liquids, and ointments included Vicks Chill Tonic, Vicks Turtle Oil Liniment, Little Laxative Pills, and Vicks Tar Heal Sarsaparilla. These products sold with varying degrees of success, but Richardson's bestseller was Vicks Magic Croup Salve, which he introduced in 1894. Richardson's salve a strong smelling ointment containing menthol, camphor, and eucalyptus blended in a base of petroleum jelly. And when the salve was rubbed on the patient's chest, the body heat vaporized the menthol, releasing soothing vapors that the patient breathed directly into the lungs. In 1911, Richardson's son Smith, a successful salesman for his father's company, recommended discontinuing all the other company's products except for the Vicks Magic Croup Salve. He believed that the salve could sell even better if the company stopped investing time and money in all the other less successful remedies. He also suggested renaming the salve Vicks VapoRub. So by 1912, it is rebranded. Meanwhile, Richardson was giving out free samples, publishing coupons in newspapers, he was advertising on billboards, and then he started sending promotional mailings to post office boxes, and he had them addressed to the box holder as opposed to the actual individual names, thus effectively starting the trend of junk mail. Thanks, Richardson. A hundred years later, we are so happy you thought of that. <laughs> By 1917, Sales were over a half million dollars. But the following year, in 1918, during the Spanish flu epidemic that killed 25 million people worldwide, sales were almost three million dollars. Ironically, he himself was a victim of the flu. He succumbed to pneumonia while he was on a trip to San Francisco, and he died in August 1919. An editorial in the Greensboro Daily News when he died, said, he never passed anyone on the street, young or old, black or white, without a nod and a smile. Lunsford Richardson was an elder in his church. He was particularly interested in the welfare of African Americans. During World War II, a Liberty ship was christened SS Lunsford Richardson as, quote, a special request from the leading Negro citizens of North Carolina to honor the memory of a white friend. And L. Richardson Memorial Hospital in Greensboro was renamed to honor him. In 1925, 
Vicks published a children's book to help promote Vicks Vaporub. Blix and Blee are two elves that help a mother of a sick child who refuses to take these nasty tasting medicines. Their solution, of course, was the salve known as Vicks Vaporub. So I have two cobalt blue vapor rub containers which both have a mark of two triangles at the bottom. This mark was used on Vix jars from the 1910s through the 30s. I also have a Vix Vatronol bottle. Vatronol nose drops was introduced in 1931. It had a little dropper in it and you would lean your head back and you would use the dropper to put a few drops in your nose. You would use this like you would Claritin or Sudafed today. So in 1985, Vicks Chemical Company was sold to Procter & Gamble. And obviously, VapoRub still exists today. Today's Vicks users claim that VapoRub can cure many things. Vicks doesn't claim it works for all these problems, but there are countless websites and videos from people who swear by it. So, if you have any of these problems, and you haven't tried Vaporub for it yet, maybe you should give it a shot. Well, that's it for this episode. We'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.